Ladies and gents, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the Soapy Rao Show. I'm Sandeep and today I'm joined by, well, what do I say? A remarkable man, a dedicated man, a fun guy, a person I shared a stage with five years back. In fact, six years back, as we just discussed, a person doing a lot of interesting work for something that may be discounted as a drug and a recreational habit. But essentially, he's here today to talk about the actual truth behind cannabis, its medicinal purposes, its medicinal benefits, its misconception by you know, pharma, by, by, by companies, by the corporatization of the medical industry and various other things. But he's going to do it because he does a better job. He's, um, he's got um, his entire backing behind the uh, great legalization movement. He's got cannabis as a, as a, as a cure and prevention and treatment for diseases. Uh, he's got a foundation that takes care of, takes care of that. So I'll tell you, I'll, I'll let him tell you about all of this and a lot more. And we're going to talk about a lot of fun stuff today, and maybe even about uh, you know smoking up a little bit to get um, nice and in a good place. <laughs> but ladies and gents, without further ado, please welcome onto the episode, uh, Mr. Vicky Varora. Vicky, welcome to the podcast, my friend. Hey, thanks, Sandeep. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Thanks for doing what you're doing because, you know, honestly, with people like you around in today's world, I really don't have to look far for fun, exciting, dedicated guests. So I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> so what have you been up to? I think we met in 2015 uh, at the TEDx Bangalore event. I wasn't yeah. uh, giving a talk. You were. And uh, what have you been up to since then? Because at that point, the great legalization movement was in place. And mm -hmm. if you could briefly talk about that uh, movement for people who haven't heard of it. And since then, what's been going on? What's the status of legalization of cannabis and how the lockdown has been for you and how it's wow. affected your movement? I know it's a little bit of a loaded question, but maybe, you know, we okay. can just take it from there and sort of in the middle, just throw in our experiences and throw in uh, what's happening. So, uh, yeah, GLM was uh, started in 2014 uh, mm -hmm. after helping a cancer patient and watching her recover completely uh, and coming back to life from her deathbed. And then suddenly there was this realization that you no, know, like uh, everything that um, was researched on cannabis uh, that was on the internet, uh, very widely available back then on Facebook, lack of censorship and other things. Uh -huh. So uh, everything that we had studied was no longer just these internet stories anymore. And it was actually the truth. And to realize that cannabis is such a potential cure into bringing this dead person back to life and having no symptoms of the disease, having no suffering, and completely having a normal life, that was like a very uh, uh, life-changing, shocking experience rather. And then GLM began in 2014, the very next day after uh, Vicky figured out that you know, like, uh, 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 her, she was cured from cancer. And um, so ever since then, the struggle has always been like to get this word out to the patient circles, to the uh, uh, doctors, to the lawyers, to the government bodies. Uh, uh, personally, in the first three years itself, so from 2014, uh, went all the way from um, the offices of Karnataka Health Secretary, Commissioners, uh, uh, Excise Department of uh, uh, Finance, uh, Vidana Sauda here, all the way till the Prime Minister's office within the first three years. And then, um, uh, but none of them had the courage to make the decision because the taboo was so strong and their lack of belief in cannabis they thought like who's this guy who's coming in the uh, coming into our office and asking us to legalize the ganja and uh, give uh, medicines made out of ganja and all of these things very open discussions with the government you no know? like mm -hmm. telling them very up right right in their face that you no know, like ganja is not as bad as a substance that you think it is it's just that been must have highly been interesting i'd like to be a fly on the wall for that one <laughs> <laughs> it is it was rather interesting and you know like every time when you use the word you no know, like like, uh, okay, let's. You know, I want to talk about that because we have this idea behind uh, ganja, right? Like it's this conception yeah. that's been created in our minds, whether it's in Hollywood about Cheech and Chong uh, and these guys who are stoned out of their minds, yeah. not doing anything, productivity is low. They're just like, yeah, man, it's all about the love, bro. Like, you know, that whole love movement, yeah. the hippie movement and all these words like the hippie movement or even Cheech and Chong, the love movement. And when it comes to India, whether it's like, you know, the, the, the sadhus at Kumbh Mela or whatever it may be, why does 
I mean, maybe why is not the right question because why has so many um, so many things that can go into it, right? Which could be the the uh-huh. demonization by a society that wants to look at itself as you know holier than thou, religious, uh-huh. or whatever the word is, or a set of corporate um, entities going, you know what? Let's demonize this because that way we can push our agenda, our medication. But maybe the question is, what are the things that have contributed to make marijuana cannabis and i don't want to say them uh, i don't want to inter sort of loosely interchange the two but maybe you can uh, address that question as well as what is the difference yeah. but w- w- what is this culture we have because you spoke you spoke about this and you speak continue to do so about how cannabis is a plant native to the indian con- subcontinent and it's been around it, for thousands of years it in fact was uh, very strongly argued and uh, that it originated in the indian region in the himalayan region i mean if you look and at the spiritual there, texts yeah. and also these spiritual movements they talk about the himalayas and how india and tibet has been at the center of certain very very strong energy movements over the past thousands of years and therefore maybe you know this was given as a medicine i am sure that you've read about soma and the drink in yeah. in the vedas and similarly this was a herb which is given so and the, i think so in the native... mythologic mythological stories that indra the lord of the planet earth mm-hmm. uh, he goes to the gods uh, to the heaven and then begs the gods that you know like there's so much suffering on planet earth please give us something uh, to remove our suffering and then all of a sudden uh, brahma vishnu and shiva all three of them uh, bless indra uh, and a drop uh, fell on the planet earth and they said you no know, like once it fell uh, uh, it became like a plant and uh, oh. that that plant they say that you no know, like if you consume this plant all of your suffering is going to be removed and it is true absolutely because no matter how stressed out you are no matter how uh, how much you're suffering in your mind or your body the moment you consume this plant it takes away your biological problems physical problems and also your mental problems emotional problems your uh, spiritual problems all of these things it's like slowly removed and it detoxes all of these bad things and in a way yeah, yeah there might be something no, it's amazing because you know the yeah. rebirth of these medic med- i wouldn't say medicines but these naturally available herbs like you i'm sure you've uh, a lot of people listening have heard of now this re sort of vitalization of ayahuasca and then the psilocybin mushrooms yeah, and yeah. all these things which are naturally available but have been suppressed for so many years and demonized not even suppressed it's mm. been like if you do this you're a unproductive member of society you're mm. a vagabond you're just mm. up to no good you probably just play video and it's such silly connotations right yeah, so yeah. maybe just to start with uh, vicky like you know i i i you know i think i have done some reading and i've been really keen to know about this entire movement and I w- it's such an ancient thing that it, it's so silly to say that is movement right it's been around and it's, it's just been the happily chilling we are the ones who sort of gone through this whole t- whole turmoil and cycle in our minds going it's bad it's good it's good it's bad it's bad it's good so but for someone who doesn't know and who someone who's scared who going oh my god it's marijuana ganja bro it's going to how can you break it down in the most simple way and talk about it ganja or the word is hemp or maybe cannabis or marijuana maybe just in a very basic 101 can you explain to someone listening right now who's maybe terrified of what it is and what it can do and maybe demystify and de sort of uh, construct some of the myths around it see there are two cannabis can be very broadly categorized into two different uh, plants one is the uh, cannabis used for uh, psychoactive uh, uh, purposes mm-hmm. uh, uh, that can be subclassified into either personal consumption or medicinal consumption or spiritual consumption okay mm-hmm. which is all about psychoactive and the other one is the industrial variety of the plant where it's mainly grown for the fibers and the seeds and other things this is called as hemp Uh-huh. it's cannabis hemp and the other one is simply called as cannabis uh, okay. in india we call the flowers of the cannabis as ganja okay. when the flowers are rubbed and all the sticky resins that gives you this uh, psychoactive effect when they are collected and then they're made into like this very concentrated form that's called hashish or charas right and when you right. uh, when you when you extract oil from it and then give you make it a liquid one then that's called the cannabis oil or um, hemp oil is, is it the same no no it's different hemp oil is from the seeds so you use right. the seeds of the plant to crush and then just extract oil from it like whatever so that would If, be like a you know what they use now in cooking like a sunflower yeah, sunflower actually, seed this is much better because the original cannabis hemp oil also contains slight traces of thc within it and it's very medicinal and it's one of the most highest levels of cooking oils that you can actually use or even ah. like a salad dressing oil because it has or even lot on of your skin or hair or yeah it has topically. a lot of tremendous amount of medicinal benefits but the propaganda right now is 
they're creating policies and frameworks uh, and legal hurdles that all the farmers should grow cannabis hemp the industrial variety which produces less than 1% of thc in it okay uh, which is so a let's bullshit. just clarify that you're saying instead of growing the cannabis plant they're asking them to grow the one which is the hemp plant which is used for say these other materials and it has very low potency yeah, the with fi- the fibers and yeah all of them. so uh-huh. they're creating a limitation that it needs to be under 1% 0.5% which is bullshit uh-huh. because you're taking something that is naturally evolved on the planet earth for millions and billions of years and all of a sudden who gives the government these authorities to come and dictate that okay if you're growing a chili the the amount of spice needs to be only to mm. this basic margin nothing beyond that right um, in in a way it makes sense why they're framing all of these laws which is like they'd not want like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of lands growing all of these psychoactive compounds yeah. it's one of the best way to control but it is naturally going to be a very very degrading thing for the plant botanically also uh, um, as an agro um, ethics also it's very bad it's not like natural farming none of these things are it, it's very very bad and so it also almost making like a, a genetically modified plant to yeah, be less it gives birth to a lot of monopolizations also because only few companies will be able to sell seeds to all of the farmers and if the right. farmer grows any particular cannabis hemp in the future he'll have to buy back the seeds again from this one company rather than him using the same seeds that he has gotten back into the land so this is a sounds very, like this again, agricultural this trap industry. right a lot of people with yeah. rice seeds and all i mean with the same issue yeah. where they kind of get these uh, pe- this pe- this pest resilient crops yeah. and then yeah. you have to go back They're to the same person bad, perpetuating very bad, very that very bad right very bad. and uh, okay. so the difference between uh, so all of these things are like this two broad classification is psychoactive side and the other one is the industrial side psychoactive you have medicine you can use it medicinally you can use it personally just to uh, 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 relax and uh, you can use it spiritually for you to you know like go deeper into your practices your yoga your sadhana your uh, whatever it is that you practice uh, you can go deeper into your spiritual practices uh, through cannabis okay so on these three fronts right spiritually mm. you can take it personally you can take it even medicinally, medicinally. Mm. now why is there so much of this fear that it's going to it, i mean because okay I'm going to ask you a couple of things as a person might who's uh, never experienced this. I'm going to ask you some questions which might seem uh, silly, might be thing but which might represent some genuine concerns people might have. So number one, can you overdose on cannabis? Uh you cannot die, but you mm-hmm. can overdo overdo the cannabis. For example, so what is that result? You, in? you you can imagine there is a fire there's a you can keep your hand slightly away from fire or you can literally put your hand into the fire yeah so yeah. you can take a lot of cannabis inside your body it might be a little uncomfortable experience for you that you have taken a little too much right but you cannot die from it because there there are no cannabinoid receptors in your brain in the part of the brain which controls your cardiovascular functions and your breathing functions so, so it can't switch that off it can't override you cannot, it, the, yeah the cannabis cannot like you can simply like pass out and you can be like uh, uh, passed out for a few hours and things like that uh, or you can have a very uncomfortable experience but it can't uh, do what heroin and cocaine does you cannot because heroin if you do too much then it can stop your heart you can yeah. have like a heart attack or you can do cocaine too much it can have like really fast heart palpitations and you can die or a heart attack or even for that matter i'm going to just throw this in there even prescription medicine can do that yeah, if you take absolutely. an excess of all the painkillers that yeah. comes with a notice that you cannot take more than one pill in 24 hours period of time so Correct. Okay, so you can't kill you. Okay, but bad. of course you have to be smart about it. You go the first time and pop like so you know. The thing is, no, like look, humans are smart. You don't need to like think that we are really stupid. Yeah. We all have coffee in our house. We have all have coffee powders in our house. You can either make one cup of coffee and enjoy your day, or you can drink ten <laughs> cups of coffee and have like I'll a. Be wired out of your mind. Yeah. <laughs> and then heartbeat and anxiety and heart burns and you can yeah. like you won't do it again. I don't Even get it you know like the people are sitting here saying marijuana or cannabis and, and they say it in the same breath it's so bad it's uh, and they say it in this this I'm sure you've heard this right uh, all these young kids are doing it western culture is spoiled them but mm. at the same time you sit there and eat 15 zompapdis <laughs> I mean <laughs> of 15 pedas what the fuck is going on with people right like you're such hypocrites you go and feed your face at these buffets going and eating butter and ghee and and, and deep fried and milk sweet. is also another thing you know like 
it's such a harmful thing because we are sugar right is what you said milk 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 okay okay because it's not a direct food that we are supposed to consume we, it comes from another animal we are torturing all of these animals we are tying them up for their entire life we are not letting their young ones to feed on this milk yeah. we just like give them like one or two minutes of it to consume from the mother and then we snatch it back and then we suck out all the milk we sell it we make an industrial product out of it and then we are happily sitting and drinking coffee you know you coffee know i think that's the point i think which is very important is is all of this right uh, we you know i think in itself can i think you know like now even the way uh, when people say legalization when it comes to legalization there comes the thing going okay you know what it's legal so now it's fair play or rather unfair play or it's competitive play for these corporates whether it's the farmer or whether it's the agricultural sort of the seed manufacturers or in the milk industry it's the milk the, the farm the farm um factory farming what do you even call it mm, mm. so like with cows like you know i think a cow does produce mm. milk naturally and if you have a cow on your farm your the likelihood of you getting milk naturally is higher than someone who doesn't have a cow but mm. when the factory farming comes in they're going to ensure that you know at the cost of an animal's life it's just going to produce milk over and over and over again at the detriment of that cow or the cow's uh, plural life and similarly in this when you legalize marijuana or cannabis, cannabis the beneficial part of cannabis is taken out i'm sorry if i keep saying marijuana cannabis i, I don't mean to Inter- loosely interchange tell, it. Tell, tell you why it's a very big problem after you finish your question yeah yeah okay so let's just call it cannabis okay because i kind of i'm i am coming from the perspective of a layman so when cannabis is grown for these things which is medicinal personal recreational spiritual and of course when the byproducts are used for say you know you have run of the mill uses everyday uses whether it's hemp seed oil or you use the fibers for toothbrushes or whatever it may be then you're kind of getting all of the plant and you and that's how it was in the past when an animal was butchered you use it for everything you use the skin you use the meat you yeah, use yeah. all of it the bone and now it's wastage because you use milk and then you dispose of that cow when it no longer produces milk and it's applied across the board with plants with fibers with all the industries it's a ton of wastage and it's a ton of aspects of the plant that are being ignored so my thing to you is you know i think maybe you should just explain the difference first so we can understand that and i don't have to keep making that mistake of the the two no, words so maybe no, you can... the thing is with marijuana and hemp marijuana was never really a word uh, uh, actually it was created uh, to in america during the 1930s to create a propaganda they wanted to uh, take cannabis away from the human society for good because this plant posed serious threat to a lot of these existing billion dollar companies uh in america back then because it yeah. was able to so in 1930s there was a new invention of a machine called as the decorticator and that for the first time it the machine was able to process uh, tons of fibers uh, for the farmers usually farmers had like thousands of acres of land and mm-hmm. whatever they grew everything was you know like it was still slavery you know like all of these things that was like being used a lot of human human um, uh, efforts were needed yeah. so when dec- decorticator came it became very easy for any farmer to have and own this one machine grow take all of this plant material and then process it and then um, um, uh, create raw materials and products for various industries now this mm-hmm. thing became an in- this became a very big threat to paper industries lumber mm-hmm. industries oil industries pharmaceutical uh, on uh, textile industries all of these industries and these industries were owned by extremely rich people in the country so right. when this plant became a threat they thought like okay we need to take this plant away so they wanted to create a propaganda so they called right. uh, that there is a very dangerous drug that uh, that has come in from the mexico which is like a wild tobacco mm. and uh, this uh, wild tobacco is brought into america by the mexicans and the mexicans use it uh, which is called as the marijuana and now the african americans are using it and then they're smoking it and then they're raping the white women and uh, it creates a lot of suicidal tendencies and there's a lot of sexual parties and all of these things such right. a big propaganda was created for over a period of 5 to 7 years with this new title called the marijuana 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 now uh, and not once did they actually tell the farmers or the general public that they were actually removing a plant called the cannabis or indian hemp it was called as right. everyone knew it as cannabis and hemp they recreated a new term just to mm. uh, 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 dismiss it and then like they passed a law and they and made this marijuana entire sort of back story around marijuana built this entire mm. sort of misconception around what it does who smokes it or who so it's, uses it's, it yeah it's a very racist uh, thing also and hence glm it's never used this word marijuana ever you know in fact we Got educate it. No, it makes sense i mean it's it's kind of like why would you use a word that is 
I mean, it, first of all, it's an uphill battle to sort of, sort of convince people who are unwilling to hear this side of the story, right? Mm. And when there's a word which has sort of got a connotation with it, just I think it's easier not to use it. But, you know, so, also, it's so yeah, on, the, on the Indian terrain, it becomes much easier for us to go and speak. Like, for example, can randomly walk out right now of my house and talk to 10 auto drivers and ask them all, like, uh, do you know marijuana? And everyone would be like, no, we don't know what marijuana is. If I ask yeah. 10 of them, like, do you know ganja? Everyone would be like, yes. We know what ganja is. Mm. So if people in this society, they know what ganja is. They know what charas or hashish, maybe yeah. not everyone or bhang, but everyone knows the word ganja. And it is that exact taboo that needs to be removed. But the botanical name of the plant is cannabis. So right. cannabis is what we talk about. And we have those receptors, right, in the body, the cannabinoid yeah, the system. Cannabinoid which is, yeah, receptors, yeah. But what I want to, you know, it's so baffling when... Um, and it's not actually, it's not at all baffling if you, if you just wrap mm. your head around it. When you look at something that avoids uh conflict in your brain it sort of makes it helps you be, be a more be a little more aware human being gives you a little clarity gives you a sense of peace and when it does things like that bolster a sense of happiness uh, no wonder people don't want that to prosper right because they want to create this population that is sick either through dependency on pharmaceutical prescription medicine mm. or on a fast food industry which makes you more unhealthy or on mm. a on, on a consumer based society, which makes you want more, buy more, shop more, dispose more, and as a result, waste more. So when all these things are so evident as trends, I'm not surprised that something like, you know, like when people wanted to promote love, like, you know, say someone like John Lennon or Martin Luther King, they were assassinated. Yeah. Similarly, when there's a when there's a herbal option or solution to promote humanity and promote the well being of people, you wow. obviously want to demonize that because, hey, the best way to keep a population, you know, without rebellion or without revolting is to keep them in fear and confusion we'll, and we'll, depression, right? We'll tell you the exact reason why majorly cannabis is prohibited. It, or, or of all of these bullshit reasons that, uh, that was already mentioned, which is uh, 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 with the America and the war and the, uh, all of these things. The greatest of all of the reasons why cannabis is actually prohibited is mainly because it unites people yeah. this is the this is the strongest thing and those who run the world they know for sure that cannabis unites people and they do not want a united force uh uh where, who doesn't take any orders you know like once <laughs> you start smoking cannabis you become sort of like a revolutionary and uh you have your own thinking and you have logic and you have common sense and you start connecting things and then you um you have your own understanding of what world is and you operate on a different thing and all your brainwashing uh, is gone. It's, it's for a waste. So the rulers of right. this world, they do not want uh, an entire global population to be off that level. So uh, okay. one of the but I'm going to throw a flip side. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm going to throw Tell a flip me. side in there, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, I think it's important to also understand that anything can be abused. When I say abused, I mean, exploited is what the governments or governments or the people in so-called power are doing is, of course, is preventing people from, you know, sort of understanding and appreciating the benefits of this. But also when you get, I mean, I'm not assuming that all people are stupid. Of course, there are responsible or there are people who will use it uh, in, a, in, in, in the way it should be. But you do have people on the other end who are just going to take uh, and play to this script of, oh, marijuana is, or, you know, I'm this pothead. And, you know, those, those, those kind of culturally uh, synonymous terms with smoking marijuana or cannabis, right? Where they're like, yeah, I'm just going to. So the thing is, when, when you, there is a certain balance that needs to be struck, right? Because either just smoking or consuming this plant in its truest form makes you a certain person or whatever it may be. But there is a way in which it was meant to be used because there is, even if you look at uh, certain tribal rituals, whether it's with ayahuasca, there needs to be a certain level of awareness. That is what I've heard that you can't just give it to anyone who's not ready to be initiated or to receive this medicine. So when someone like that maybe takes it, has a bad trip or bad experience, that just sort of propagates the same myth that it's bad for you. So what would you like, you know, what would we, what, as a person who's kind of trying to sort of... Hey, if, someone, with... if someone has a bad uh, trip in the beginning, they'll always be afraid of the plant and they yeah. know that the plant is too powerful for them to handle and they'll probably never try. So the whole concept of you try it and you become addicted and hooked to it, that thing fails. Yeah. Uh, the addiction and hook, uh, hooking onto this thing really comes with what kind of a good experience you have with cannabis. And if something makes you feel good and you have every right to use it regardless, yeah. uh, the one problem where it really falls back is like uh, the thing that you do should not be harming yourself or the society yeah. in any way or form. Yeah. 
for example you have like you, you can either put it to yourself when you know like kill yourself uh, which is a very bad thing so that doesn't mean that you have to remove knife for everyone yeah no and we have knife in everyone's house <laughs> yeah yeah we have yeah. lighters we have cylinders we have all sorts of horrible things but you no know, like it's a plant it's a culture and uh, if you use it see if you have lot of suffering in your mind and uh, as an emotion or if you have like biological uh, like problem biologically or you're suffering from some kind of a disease and other things uh, this plant really takes away all of these things even the mental problem let's not go too far you know like just to deal with day to day stress yeah uh, um, why is it that the government is saying that okay you can drink alcohol you can smoke cigarettes both are extremely industrialized both are extremely owned by really wealthy people and uh, uh, and both have a lot of medical consequences right yeah yeah uh alcohol is a medicinal uh, thing also tobacco is a medicinal thing tobacco cannot cause cancer but industrialized cigarettes can cause yeah. cancer because they are grown on an industrial level they are grown with thousands of acres they spray a lot of chemicals to keep the pests away and by mm. the time your tobacco as a cigarette is manufactured it has a lot of these chemicals that are not naturally found in the tobacco plant tobacco plant is always uh, is even today when you go to an amazon forest if you're falling sick or if you're not feeling good the first thing that the shaman over there in the forest would do is like ask you to chew a little bit of the tobacco plant so that when the juices go inside it really detoxes your entire system and then cleans it away it is used as a spiritual uh, uh, medicine right. even to this day in amazon forest but we have made an What's industrialized the, product this, of uh, hemp revolution is the, is what happened with tobacco in its purest form was not a bad thing but because it's being industrialized it's, it's the same thing the fear right now is you no know, like if we if it, it's it needs to be done very carefully uh, uh, where if if it goes into the hands of government and they see the money in it and they're going to regulate it to such bad norms and policies that Uh, it's going to be the exact same american route of you know like having the cannabis cafes everywhere and this and that and all of these things but our culture here is different man mm-hmm. even even in our culture we used cannabis mainly on during the national festivals during holi during diwali during yeah. ram navmi during dasara uh, during not like the typical dutch cafes the yeah it's not yeah. it's yeah it, it, I have no problem if you want to use it every day but you know like there's also like how much you how much you'll have to use how much you can consume uh, mm-hmm. what is a good way to use cannabis how to balance your life and all of these things you know like from your professional life to relaxed life you need to have a very strong yeah uh, i mean that's what that's my concern because you know it's it can't it can't exist in either extreme either we don't have it at all but, or we have these kind of around every corner you have people just sitting there stoned out of their minds or whatever the word they want to use now let me let me give you another complete Uh, side of this uh, yeah. uh, conversation which is those people who did cannabis a little too much uh, today in my life in my personal journey i can confidently say that there are some of the most unique individuals who are very very successful who have uh, a thing that is so individualistic be it in their art form be it in uh, their professional life they're extremely uh, successful and rich and I haven't seen a guy who's completely wasted on cannabis on alcohol yes yeah. definitely a lot of people and that's when i meant are, alcohol and cigarettes actually mean that you know the alcohol i'm sure I, you know it's got uh, it, it's definitely got some therapeutic benefits anything when it does with the system and uh, it, but i think yeah. the way it's you, been you, you use it just a little bit about 30 ml or 60 ml of alcohol every day once in the evening or something like that it is okay but yeah but the way uh, it it's sort of pushed the agenda for alcohol is like you know it's encouraged to be yeah, a like, binge drinking come on go yeah. you know have this have that and wrong. do it you know it doesn't matter because that's making you sick and if you if you're sick then you're you need it more and i think that's the sad part of it right is but when something is good you make it bad for someone when something yeah. is bad you kind of pr- 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 push it even further down the throats yeah. of people yeah. and and you're right about this thing i want to understand more about it right so one thing is how did your experience with uh, cannabis start and how did you get into the space of um because i think i read somewhere that you have uh, worked with rick simpson who's kind of the leading expert with cannabis and the benefits of cannabis as a therapy as a preventative cure as a preventative uh, medicine and as a medicine to cure diseases so can you just let, briefly just talk about where you started from there and also the experience you've seen of people on cannabis 
My journey with cannabis began in 2009 when a friend of mine in college told me that uh, he smoked cannabis and his concentration power was so extremely uh, heightened and it was like a very unique experience. And he also told me that you no, know, like a lot of these musicians use cannabis to increase their concentration and their level of play and other things. And back then in 2009, Vicky wanted to be a musician, you know, like into heavy metal and a lot of guitaring and practicing guitar for like six hours every day, nonstop. Uh, so you would uh, do that back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how old were you back then, 2009? 19. So, okay, so this is an exact like 11, 12 years 11, back. Yeah, Crazy, yeah. okay. And uh, so did did try it the first time. Um, uh, didn't buy cannabis, didn't go looking out for it. Someone bought, someone didn't have the balls to take it to their home. Someone kept <laughs> it in my uh, uh, vehicle, which was a Honda Dio back then. He said, right. just keep it today. You know, like, I don't want to take it home. My dad also plays the guitar. I don't want him to this find it. This is in Bangalore? Dad in Bangalore. Right, right. And uh, so it was there. And then at one o'clock after all the practice was sitting there and then was thinking, hey, this guy has kept some ganja in the bike. <laughs> you know, like, let me go and try. Yeah. The fool, fool that Vicky was, when he picked it up, he didn't know how much to smoke. So he unloaded the entire cigarette, which had tobacco filler oh. <laughs> and put the entire uh, cannabis uh, like powder and then put it inside. Didn't know what were the effects like. Smoked the entire thing at 1.30 in the night, the first oh. thing. And man, this was like... You must have been so paranoid. <laughs> very. With, uh, man, in, you know, the safety exactly had to be... Five minutes, in exactly five minutes, the mouth was completely dry. The oh God, that's the worst fell. feeling. I want to ask you why that happens and because... The, I had the same experience 2003, even before like you had this experience. I remember a couple of places, uh, uh, you know, uh, I'd say uh, dormitory mates in college university in, in the UK and they were playing video games. Xbox was new then and I've never smoked and I did the same thing you did and I just took like five massive hits. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I'm staring at the heater going, this Xbox is getting, getting damn hot. And mm -hmm. I'm just like so paranoid. I thought I'm going to choke. My mouth's gone dry. So what, why did, what, yeah. So what, how do you get through that? So it was very difficult now, like uh, uh, for me, the time disappeared. I was, uh, uh, was like trying to hold on to like, okay, holding, holding, and then poof, you're gone and you're gone for like a good 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then after that, you're coming back and then like, okay, you're here, you know, like, let's me, let me hang on to a life again. Like it's taking you back. It, it yeah. was like an intense trip the first time and never tried cannabis for one year or one and a half years after that again. Ever. Whoa, that didn't, really didn't freaked mean, you out. Yeah. Didn't, it, it did freak me out. Uh, 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 was standing under a cold shower for like an hour and then sleeping with the lights <laughs> on and you know, like really thought like if I go to sleep, you know, like you're not gonna wake, wake up, up tomorrow morning. <laughs> Didn't want to go and tell parents because. <laughs> so, now I'm glad you're doing this and you're telling your story because I'm sure people have done this and they're like, okay, cool, I'm never doing it again. But you hear someone who's taken a life but uh, then, but in then, this, yeah. But then when uh, when we give a studying in Singapore, uh, all of the friends smoking and it was like no it's not for me man like you guys enjoy and yeah in the dormitory and other things but then like, that too out of all places singapore <laughs> singapore yeah smart you, you, have, you have no idea how many people are using drugs in singapore man. i mean i'm i'm 100 percent sure that it's way more but then so uh, people think it is because singapore can't I mean, they, they can't, they, they, they portray this image of being where all about our citizens' well-being and control them. Nah, Singapore's got a huge, any place that has an exterior image like that definitely has an underbelly of they drugs. They need the used. nature inside, otherwise they're going to go crazy. Absolutely. Know? That's With the thing, that right? Because it's so... concrete structure that they have. Yeah. Uh, and everything. Anyway. So, yeah, go so, so you were in college. Anyway, you were... So in, in Singapore, you know, like my friend, uh, he told me one of the best things ever in my life and to this day, uh, forever thankful for him to use those words. Uh, um, you know, he said, smoke cannabis how much ever you want, but there is a way to smoke it. You just take one drag, two drags, and then start slow. You don't have to take the whole thing. So again, so then and it was like restarting you know, like my life and journey on cannabis and then to smoke one drag and see what happens. Wow, it feels good. You know, like you're laughing for hours and you're listening to music and you're listening to music in, in ways and form that you have never experienced before. You're able to focus so much about all of the details about everything about this particular art that you're consuming. Yeah. And that was like a very big blown effect. And within a week or month of using it, started, started slowly realizing that the depression that was there in the mind disappeared completely and this social anxiety disappeared and was able to communicate with people very easily uh, and then be, became really interested in about this thing so started taking cannabis uh, personally so came back from singapore back in bangalore uh, by myself in the room and then like was comfortably smoking a joint every night uh, after like all of my work was done taking my dog out for a walk at 11 o'clock and then coming back shut the room door have some good music on keep it a bad the thing to do uh, every night thing. 
Sorry? Is that a bad thing to smoke a joint? No, 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 no. If you, right. once you're used to it, it's okay. Uh, but yeah. the thing is, you no, know, like, so me started smoking completely raw joints back in uh, uh, 2011 and 12. Mm. So it was all like raw joints without any tobacco and other things. So oh, so you mean raw? It's it's literally just the, the marijuana. Just the no, no, the, sorry, no the, the ganja tobacco. rolled up in a Just the paper. ganja, no tobacco, none of these things. Uh-huh. So it was beautiful, you know, like it became such a ritual that, you no, know, like every time at 11.30 in the night, it became like the music is good, the lights are off and you're just by yourself and then rolling this joint and then smoking it and then you're like after that after smoking you became extremely creative like all of the energies in the mind and the creative mind was being focused and channeled on composing music understanding and then you spend hours and then wake up the next morning to see like what you have composed whether it's shit whether it's good yeah, yeah. whether you want to thrash it uh, so it became like a very creative experience and 2012 in london became like an extreme stoner you know like by the end of my cannabis journey uh, uh, was smoking roughly about 14 joints in a day uh, uh, from wow, morning to that. night that is um, literally, I mean. So it was just like smoking like BDO because this, the cannabinoid stayed in the system and will tell you, you know, like that is absolutely amazing why this happened. And me ventured into cannabis, not because uh, uh, you know, like as an addict or something, uh, was really trying to understand what is the psychology between, behind cannabis? What is it? What is mm. this? What is this? So my constant question behind every cannabis was like, just to understand a little more. Okay, now a new layer is opening. Now a new layer is opening. After like Within a yourself. year of doing that and boom, like massive spiritual awakening, unexpected, unheard, unthought of, unfelt. It was beautiful. No longer needed cannabis uh, ever again, actually. So 2012, my desire for canna went away and then didn't smoke. Uh, very occasionally when someone you know like a very good friend came and then even then denied like you know like hundreds of times like no uh, peace you know, you, why because you, you had had your fill is that what you said you had like that awakening and you didn't need it anymore yeah yeah so that entire sort of year in london so, for example, you did so much yeah. it just sort of stayed in your body for the next few years yeah yeah it did for example if you're fully completely if your hunger is completely filled would you still enjoy eating the food after that? Or if your thirst right. is quenched, would you still want to keep drinking water? So, so the, the system, way- once it has its fill of cannabis, uh, cannabis, the CBD, whatever the, the, the particular... No, the THC. I, THC. It's the, not THC. the THC. Once it has its yeah. fill, the, the, the endocannabinoid system has it. So it, it's so this is not a, th- med, a, a medicine for life. If you get enough, you might, after a point, this not is, need it again. This is my spiritual journey and mental journey. Uh, medicinally needed cannabis between 2015 to 2017 was going through extreme pain in my body uh, and cannabis was the only only thing that acted as a natural painkiller to um, body used to become completely stiff to a mm-hmm. point where you cannot move you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and start crying because you cannot get up you cannot go pee no matter which leg you lift which arm you lift like you have like a serious back injury and what was uh, that? always uh, what was don't that? know don't know it was really in my mind it was really a big fuck up you know like in a way like, i mean could it have been triggered by cannabis little... because some people no, no, out no, there who no, listening no, are like uh, critics no, no, right now no. be like because he smoked too much no 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 uh, it, it was lifting uh weights that was beyond what my body okay so that okay so you were exercising when i sort of no, heavy no, actually was building a recording studio and then once a gate uh landed and then we were only three workers and it was a 200 kg gate that was supposed to okay. be lifted for three floors and three people, which is two adults and one small child, lifted this 200 kg gate to the third floor. And ever since, you no, know, like this back really. Had, so there was like right. some kind of a disc uh, uh, bulge and nerve complaint. Right. Okay. Happening. Okay. Okay. So uh, in my mind, I was thinking that you no, know, like there was some kind of a neurological disorder that's developing in the body. It was a really, really big mm. mental fuck up. So the only thing that saved me was cannabis. You no, know, like always had this uh, little thing right next to my bed. Whenever these things happen in the night, always took the pipe, uh, or became a pipe user after that. So what, right. so again, there are so many beautiful ways of using cannabis. Joins is one thing, but once you switch to the pipe, it's an amazing journey. It's a very right. personal journey. Right. So the pipe always loaded in the night. So if, if it is required, just like take this one hit when the pain increases a lot. And then you can see that within five to 10 seconds, all the pain that is focused in one center of of your body it just disappears and then suddenly your body becomes free and you can touch and you you do not feel the pain and then you become pain free for hours together after that so you can go back to life you can go back work do your thing do your job get things done and whenever pain comes cannabis is always there and this went on for about two two and a half years uh, but cannabis was never able to solve the uh, source of the problem because it was uh, a little bit of my own body alignment and stuff 
but a, mm. a, a baba from the himalayas was able to uh, pull me out of this uh, dreadful situation and show me exactly where my mistake was and he aligned my body uh, and mm. after that it was completely changed you know like once i aligned my body and it was no longer like the pain Amazing. never came back again so you had something the 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 cannabis really helped with the symptoms with the pain management the yeah. Pain, yeah the cannabis can be helped with the pain management but because it was a skeletal thing the right. fundamental source of the problem was not going away because if you're sitting in a bad alignment and pose constantly throughout the day without being mindless uh, and the you're years of that can stress. add to so yeah. many things and the entire body can reshape in that so, particular so yeah it's it's all about alignment how you sit how you stand how you walk how you sleep everything had to like literally retrain and reprogram the entire brain and mind so a lot of this mind mindfulness awareness uh, was uh, yeah. became the core of the yogic practice uh, between so this thing this this thing Vicky, I'm, since you mentioned that word i mm. just sort of wanted to go into that space is is you know i i, I um, i'm just going to give you a little bit of where i'm coming from is i was a product of the 1990s and 2000s and i've done i've t- tick box uh, those the, i've checked box <laughs> tick those boxes let me put it that way sorry having a bit of a slow moment there is uh-huh. you know i did the thing i i kind of pursued the degree abroad i i i partied i did the uh, kind of thing you go out party you do you try to look at a job you do the thing and you're kind of constantly immersed in this materialistic world based on achievement right you have to get mm-hmm. these things done before a certain age these things done before another age and these benchmarks sort of determine the way you can live your life but that resulted in what and and and, for, and, for, and you might know this is my visual impairment i mean and since i was 8 i've been sort of uh, an 80% blind in mm-hmm. both eyes because my central vision being uh, sort of affected by macular degeneration so all these things sort of manifested in a massive anxiety and all these uh, feelings of despair in 2016 i think right after we met like it started manifesting mm-hmm. in really really sort of bizarre ways like fear um and anger has been a very sort of big narrative but sort of started coming out of fear of things mundane things like getting into a car getting on a flight then get this idea of like anything i do is going to result in the sense of death anxiety and and the biggest shift of course you know the automatic thing was to sort of seek help through therapy and go to a person to understand what's going on and try to figure out the narrative and the dialogue and the reason for this narrative but then you know fast forward to last year to this year the sense of time that we got because we could step away from the rat race from things we're doing as a result of based on validation and achievement then you sort of look at this thing which you just said this this yogic practice alignment of your body mindfully living mindfully eating and then you add things like this when you kind of are in this place to receive the right kind of information and energy things are presented to you like cannabis like hemp like uh, whether it's um you know plant based medicines that can trigger a certain thing and so i want to understand is when you when you look at your therapy when it comes to the healthcare services you offer to cure people with existing conditions chronic pain with diseases like cancer even life threatening diseases palliative care everything yeah yeah uh, it, it, you know because the thing is i feel and correct me if i'm wrong is that of course it's it's important that the medication is cannabis but it's an entire sort of lifestyle change that involves all these letting go of the entire way you've been socially conditioned to achieve and to outdo and to bring people down so i think one of the key ingredients of course it's cannabis and the, the, the medicine and the plant in itself but it also comes along with its other friends which are mindfulness a sense of meditation internal exploration and not to sort of uh, worry about what people outside are doing but to live your own kind of sense of uh what you want to do for yourself as a result that determines how people interact with you so is that what you've experienced yeah absolutely um it's crazy it's it's really uh so in my mind so started helping out cancer patients in um uh 2014 2015 onwards mm-hmm. and helped thousands of cancer patients since then and the okay one second how to help in what way they completely cured uh to a large extent yeah you know wow. uh, uh, like for example if you see I'm sorry i'm uh, just playing devil's advocate here so no no, no yeah, yeah. It, wanted... yeah it, it'll be good if you play a devil's advocate yeah. uh, you can come hard on me it's all right yeah. uh, the thing is you no know, like most of the cancers that they say is incurable and other things it is actually pretty curable and uh, mm-hmm. in my experience uh, i have seen many of the people various different kinds of cancers uh, stops growing after uh, cannabis this is an absolute guarantee can give it stops you... growing it stops growing 
immediately after you do like a very high concentrated dose of rick simpson's therapy that is very okay. important it's not the cbd it's not the cbd it's not the cbd mm. it's the high high right. concentrated no, quite... rick simpson's yeah. rick simpson oil rick simpson's therapy because rick simpson he understood or he he's purely god sent man because he was able to understand all of the things about cannabis and then give an exact formulation to humanity and share the entire knowledge to the world for free and then advocated it globally for years and uh, 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 then when the first patient when we made the oil and then gave it to her uh, it was it really like from all these internet stories that you had read that cannabis cures cancer and this and that it was like absolutely true you know like this first patient and then like wow what did what did wiki do wiki came back on facebook and ranted this entire thing and then like published it and then the next day woke up to like having thousands of uh, uh, messages and other things this thing went super viral it was like a biggest explosion of this cannabis bomb uh, where no one was talking about cannabis till then since prohibition hardly any uh, there was one company boheco um and then suddenly this thing became an explorer and then um uh, soon conversations started and then like my inbox was filled with stories of cancer patients like how they were uh, mistreated uh, how they were abused in the healthcare industry how they were uh, uh, lost they lost so much of money uh, for failed treatments how all yeah. of these treatments had extremely bad side effects how um, um, uh, arrogant they were uh, in the healthcare industry like for example they would use the patient up until they bill for like 20 25 lakhs by giving them chemotherapy and radiation and none of these things helped when the patient was in absolute like they went in clean but they came out all burnt and you know, like all the uh, vital organs completely poisoned and they cannot take anything anymore they cannot even give them new chemotherapy because if they do then the kidneys would collapse and then the patient would die and they did not want a bad name on the hospital so they would tell you know like you take your patient and then go back home it's just palliative oh care and just deal with them over there at home right now and these kind of stories that really like pissed me off and there was always this side of you know like this rebellious nature that was in me from when i was young you know like uh, reading about indian independence movement freedom fighters bhagat mm-hmm. singh subhash chandra bose all of these amazing stories like there was always this rebellious nature in me and then the day uh, when we kid at all of these uh, uh, emails and uh, messages on facebook decided no this thing needs to be put to an end if there is a cure which we have already experienced this needs to be propagated people need to be informed so started educating every everyone about like this is all the knowledge take it and then make your own medicines and then uh, do it but then the sad reality of the situation was like no one knew what cannabis was and no one knew where mm. to source the cannabis no one knew what is a good strain of cannabis to make a medicine from no one knew how to make and even those people who tried to make they failed miserably by you know like having certain like very serious accidents you know like when it comes to making all of these things so then decided okay let's not do this you know like um, uh, let's start helping them out and then put my life to absolute risk and uh, uh, been on the journey ever since yeah because talking about this so openly and the fact that you give medication is, is because uh, it people will be in a position to understand that last year 2020 when cannabis was in the in the in the public eye it was in mm-hmm. context of the celebrities being arrested so automatically it's another reinforcement of this drug being demonized and people using it yeah. being bad uh, sort of bad fruits in society so when you're doing this isn't aren't you at risk of being tracked and hacked and arrested and hounded it was always okay in my mind because you know like uh, at the end of the day you know like always told myself it's for the right thing it's for the right, right. use no, but you are um, at risk right let's just establish always, that always yeah. always yeah. so you're always. not you're not a, you're not you're not kind of made a deal plea bargain or whatever with the government saying you know i'm no. going to talk you are actually helping no, people in fact, at in, your in own fact, no like in fact it was very open even on the ted tedx stage platform you know like the story was shared openly and you know like everyone knew the police commissioners knew and this and that the media kept writing we were on the headlines of bangalore mirror in 2015 we created the first medical cannabis conference for the country in mm. 2015 and then on the tedx platform and so many newspaper publications and then uh, at the government offices telling them openly and directly that you no know, like there is a cure we need to do something but the fool that wiki was you no know, like he believed that the government would be so open to such a radical solution that is available for the healthcare and then they would accept it with their yeah, arms right. wide open yeah. and then they would yeah. have me you know like do all of these projects but then 
catch them letting go of their power one, and money right <laughs> yeah go, going through one department to another department one office to other office all of their silly egoistic problems yeah. uh, their control like even the chief secretaries uh, uh, cannot like approve a project it has to come come from the minister level but if you try to catch a minister he's never free uh, have you smoked then, with the minister at any point when in this yeah, course yeah yeah even, even the health health minister of karnataka back then who was ramesh kumar uh, from congress uh, went and spoke to him my project okay my project in 20 no no what I, my question was have you ever through. smoked a spliff with any of these guys to no. get them no okay no. okay no i <laughs> could have been was, like you know what was, guys this is what it does and they would have been could, like could have oh, been great. very close to uh, the one politician who it would have been okay to smoke with was uh, tatagata satpati uh, uh, from orissa uh-huh. uh, went and met him in delhi and then uh, but no like the point of need was not to smoke a spliff but he was a cool guy uh, who was, yeah 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 uh, who's who probably would have been okay with but neither of us like really like uh, no of course i mean uh, what i was trying to, with that intention what i was trying to get but, to is just uh, this idea like once someone does it with but my my uh, healthcare project was approved in karnataka uh, back in 2016 that uh, uh, my organization was supposed to produce cannabis based medicines high fantastic. concentrated forms and supply it to the karnataka government who is going to distribute it to 800 different ayurvedic doctors under the ayush license to do a clinical study and clinical research this was an approved project in karnataka but the next departments that were who were supposed to sign on it they never signed on it which is the finance oh department and thing and when we went on a meet you know like asking them so can you please like sign up the project because it's really important you know, like a lot of people are suffering and dying and there was so much of this pressure that you know like all of these suffering people who uh, wiki used to constantly meet all of their suffering was all on my life suffering actually you know like yeah. to see them suffering and all this it's a very personal journey so when we went there with this empathetic approach the horrible thing that one of the officers in vidhan sabha who spoke uh, uh, this very dramatic thing was like hey man let the patients die you know like they've always died in the past they will always continue to die in the future who are you to who the hell are you to come and ask us any of these questions they actually said that uh, yeah that's fucked up man yeah. i mean i'm glad he uh, said it because you know what that's what that's what they are that's what they believe so yeah. fuck it go ahead and say it because i'd rather so, someone say it out loud than yeah at least pretend to be oh time. my god the people my population my fellow countrymen when they all they want is their votes mm-hmm. and in reality they don't give a fuck if these people die or they they are you know whether they're they obese and whether they're suffering because all they want is you know what when it comes to time when it comes time for me to be reelected or come back into power you better be there or give me the bribe that i deserve so i'm glad that this guy said it because you know what it sounds harsh but it's mm-hmm. the truth right but then when yeah so after all of these things when we went and met the health minister itself he was like uh, uh, told him that uh, uh, this ias officer had approved this project who's like the chief principal secretary of health uh, she was an amazing woman uh, dr shalini rajneesh one of the best uh, ias officers uh, uh, happened to meet in this entire journey so far so you know, like a calm invite understand what's your point of view okay you, you seem to have a valuable product now let's call all of the departments from the government bring them all on board in the vidhan sabha create a meet have the minutes to meet everything done in a, like two days three days like such a high class uh, 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 efficient working uh, civil officer should say uh, hats off to this woman so yeah. when It's we nice went back to the minister have some people like this right yeah, yeah when we went back to the minister again after this uh, mr ramesh kumar wherever you are hats off to you he said who the hell is this woman to approve a project for karnataka i am the health minister and then like he like through this entire paper on the table in his house and then a uh, new kind of reality you know like then when was this again this was in 2016 this was in 2017 2017, 2017 okay so these so some time had like, passed right yeah these things really like under made very clear understanding about what are the problems within the indian uh, political system or bureaucratic system and mm. uh, legislative all of these things and then it was so strange so uh, was really pissed off so created the nationwide meet first we had like a meet in eight different cities people all gathered up and the next week we had like a meet in 16 different cities people all gathered up and then right. uh, uh, went straight to uh, uh, narendra modi's uh, office uh, in delhi and then like landed this entire this three page open letter is available 
uh, like everything is actually inside that letter if you guys can you can find it very easily even on the uh, dilan's website and also if you can just punch in yeah yeah at the end of this i'm going to give the links to your healthcare yeah. organization and uh, glm.org yeah but um yeah so so, so that, anyway so we yeah, went that, that to the kind of we went to the prime minister's office the prime minister's office cleared the files immediately they asked the ministry of health please give us a feedback immediately within 30 days as to what to do with respect to legalization of cannabis mm. this was january of 2018 right and then the health ministry forwarded the letter to cdsco uh, central drug uh, standard control organization or something and mm-hmm. then once the file went there they were supposed to reply back to ministry of health pmo and to my organization within 30 days as to what it is that they want to do with legalization this is the varora health Uh, no this is glm this is glm, GLM. okay it's all okay. glm yeah right and then it's been 1500 days till date where we haven't had a reply <laughs> fucking amazing so that's what pissed me off so yeah. that also really pissed me off so uh, i was left with no option so finally like compiled all of the things and no lawyer was actually willing to take the case and fight this out no like and uh, met so many lawyers in karnataka in Now, Mumbai, Delhi, mm. uh, everyone would promise. But the next time after your first meeting is finished, when you want to get like a second appointment, all of the lawyers would like back off, or they're busy, or oh, they wouldn't return your calls. All the same, so it became very clearly understood that you no, know, like either a they do not want to spoil their reputation by uh, yeah. putting their name onto legalizing ganja, or they do not understand, or they understand the evil corruption that is within the system, or they simply do not want to do this. So finally, in twenty eighteen, uh, uh, found uh, uh, advocate Sai Deepak uh, 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 randomly um, when he was giving a speech on uh, this uh, whole Shabri Mala temple and other things. Mm-hmm. And then the way he spoke, it became really clear that yeah, this guy knows exactly what he's talking about. We want someone like this to represent uh, this case, and yeah. he seems to be legit enough. So called him. He gave us an appointment immediately. When they spoke to him, he was like uh, completely okay with the idea. and then uh, started compiling all of the information because you see the entire 8 10 years of research up until that point you never bothered to archive all of the data you have studied a lot right. of things but you have never bothered to archive put it all in a folder and all of these things but when one he said in high court we need to prove every single point that we say if you say cancer chemotherapy treatments are bad there needs to be legitimate proof you need for it. if you need to say yeah. thc cures this you need like lot of legend you can't go then, by here say yeah for yeah, sure for sure yeah so then sat down london months of extreme legal research and other things then finally compiled the case put it in the delhi high court and they tried to destroy the court case by the way for like the first 3 months they never admitted the case and in delhi high court in delhi high court right. there is lot of politics within there also like to destroy our case so that it never enters so the problem is once a court already makes a decision that this particular topic is already been discussed in a high court and it is dismissed you none of the high courts can take it again right. for the exact same questions you know like if you are asking right. the if the prayer is to legalize cannabis or remove it from the ndps act and all of these things no one can go back again to the high with court that same with the same petition same 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 set of questions of yeah. prayers because it's already decided by a judge that it's useless right so there was a lot of burden also that to get the case admitted there was a lot of external force also to dismiss the case yeah. and then finally you know like uh, we had arvind datar one of the senior lawyers who represented the case in the first two or three hearings and after that he was big, really busy then finally told sai sir that you no know, like no you need to do this because uh, it's your journey you need to do it and then finally he took the thing and then he uh, he really uh, delivered a very fantastic um, um, powerful strike in the high court and then the judge accepted the case and then they landed it in and this was 2019 uh, november when the case got admitted 35 years after cannabis was prohibited in this country for the first time a petition was filed for a full scale legalization of medicinal personal spiritual industrial all sorts of legalization with all the proofs about 3500 pages compiled evidence everything that was on the judge table and the court admitted the case and there was like a huge relief so it's legalized uh, now no it's the court has accepted the case that's a great thing which itself. is a huge thing right right no so now what is and now yeah, the so arguments it- begin Right, I'm, I'm so glad it. I'm so glad it happened before the lockdown, right? Because if that yeah, it just literally happened, happened six months lockdown. later, fuck, we would have been yeah. stuck. Yeah, and then the go- the court said you have to report back to the high court in three months. And three months later, they did give us a, a first notice, you know, like first uh, uh, written uh, um, feedback or reply from the government. Um, so, 
it was, what are you looking at now, timeline wise? No, it was February 2020, and right. then uh, we got the thing, and our next case, the next hearing was on May 5th, 2020, oh. and then the lockdown began, and all the courts like completely shut off. Shit. And the real cure for many of the healthcare and this and that that is the that is the core of this entire issue is yeah. like people are suffering, you know, like not recreational, not spiritual. It's know, to help that's people. A, that's yeah. all there. That's all still there. Of it's course, but the primary thing is to save people who can be saved. Fundamental right, all of these things are still. But there are so many people suffering for whom this is the only thing, and it is not going discussed. And another very important thing is the moment this entire Corona bullshit began, told all of the lawyers immediately that guys, this is the cure for. covid also absolutely right. because so i was going to ask you is that an, it truth? was it was always used as an antibacterial medicine antifungal medicine antiviral medicine it is known in its and, in its in its consumable form right like in its like consumable form, like cannabis oil can yeah. do this right yeah right. cannabis oil you can smoke you can eat you can eat oil whatever it is that you want to do as long as it goes inside your body into the system mm. activates all of your system receptors everything is okay vicky i'm going to i'm going to interrupt it. you for a moment here because you know, i think you're running out of time uh, you had something but i want to just quickly and this is and i'm going to get you again and again about various things i want to talk to you about on the on the show but huh. why would you uh, because you said this when we got on a call earlier today you uh, don't look at cbd and its products which are being uh, marketed in the world with the same uh, with the same faith and the same um, in the same light as cannabis why why is that uh, so the plant has about 450 different compounds okay mm -hmm. out of this about 110 are cannabinoids which means they're only found within the cannabis plant yeah out of these 110 cannabinoids there are about 8 to 10 compounds that are very well studied and researched right which includes thc cbd cbg cbn cbc cbd all of these things about right. eight to 10 compounds very well studied and they understand that all of it so thc and cbd seems to be two primal and fundamental cannabinoids that are very important for the healthcare of course every one of these cannabinoids after that it all supports in the process of healing every right. single one of these cannabinoid has an effect of different order as to how fast is the high how long is the high how uh, uh, how curative is this thing what kind of other hormonal or uh, uh, biological functions does it trigger or does it suppress all of these things every cannabinoid has all of these things saying that thc is something that is like a nasha and it is an intoxicating which is a very degrading term yeah. to be used intoxicating you do not get intoxicated yeah get elevated from cannabis yeah and toxin is a very different connotation right yeah, yeah intoxication is losing control over your body yeah so in cannabis it, that happens on alcohol you drink a lot of alcohol you lose control over your body you cannot stand you cannot walk you are not in control of your speech of your actions of your thoughts all of these things too much of alcohol yeah. but uh, on cannabis on the other end it elevates you it it brings this awareness inside you it brings this uh, uh, sensual uh, awareness on of all of your five senses and other things mm -hmm. so uh, it elevates it's not an intoxication it's a, a psychoactive enhancer if anything right. so they use this degrading term called intoxication and uh, they really say thc is nothing less than just an intoxication then in fact all of the scientific studies have proven that thc is a very important thing that is the anti cancerous that activates the certain receptors within the brain and it de-stresses your mind once the mind is de-stressed you are in a happier state once you are in a happier state there is a very beautiful harmony between your body and your mind wherein it synergistically can work together body and mind working together to eradicate all of these stress and disorders and diseases in your body because mm -hmm. if your body You, you need to remember your body your mind your emotions all play a, uh, they all work together okay if your body yeah. doesn't work properly if it has certain kind of a problem your emotions and your mind gets affected yeah your emotions get affected through which your body and mind gets affected your mind gets affected through which your emotions and body gets affected they're all very interlinked interlinked so yeah this yeah. this thc is very very essential to activate certain receptors that de-stresses your mind completely to a state where you have an extremely uh, uh, um uh, de-stressed uh, living for which is most conducive for healing right yeah 
which is extremely right choices of word conducive for healing also it takes your body to a state called homeostasis homeostasis mm. is this particular space which is a very natural state when you are happy when you are relaxed when you are not really worked out in your mind or your body and where homeostasis is a very perfect arrangement of your entire biological function everything okay. is happening exactly how it is supposed to be happening the moment you take too much stress in your mind it's not no longer in the homeostasis homeostasis you know like mm. everything is like disorder in your body right. so that's why when your pancreas is not producing enough uh, fluids then you have uh, diabetes when your liver is not functioning then your kidney is not functioning and your immunity is low then your blood counts blood counts keeps changing but your body doesn't dis- uh, dis- uh, 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 can can no longer uh, understand all of these things yeah. so only by you becoming completely relaxed which is and also balanced. possible through meditation yeah which is also possible through meditation and yoga and nature and natural vidhi and all of these things but cannabis does it so beautifully and wonderfully and effectively that is right. the most important thing no matter what you are who you are it's, look it's like you can sit for meditation 100 different times and how many different of these hot sessions do you have like a very full qualitative qualitative meditative experience very less but i mean but again cannabis. i think none of these exist in isolation they can exist in harmony right you can have yeah. meditation with cannabis also, you can have also, cannabis also. with food no, the thing is i'm i'm comparing only cannabis and meditation for now not everyone knows how to meditate yeah. not everyone knows how to sit for meditation not everyone knows what to do and nobody thinks it's important right it's not it's and not so, the priority <laughs> so when you take when you take cannabis it just like beautifully takes your body exactly to the right frequency where you need to be in yeah which is relaxed which is amazing No I'm sold my friend I I'm sold <laughs> I was sold before I even spoke to you I mean it's amazing that uh 6 years later it just sort of happened that you know someone then you know I don't have too many people on Instagram who sort of like my post but one person did I went to their profile turns out they sort of had your glm.org and I'm like, this guy's story I've heard before and I want to talk to him again so I'm so glad that um you agree to do this at such at such short notice and i mean your belief just coming in this, back to life by the way sorry just coming back to life I was taking a very massive spiritual break for like an entire last one year uh, disappeared last year uh, around this time uh, july and august and you were in, you were in, in, this, in india yeah in india I wasn't available to anyone no phone call no emails no social media activities nothing Everything hey that's great that you're coming back uh, out of the back. woodwork on on my show <laughs> just came back just coming back now amazing lots to, to have you back lots to do yeah no so i'd like to hear about that like maybe officially and inof- uh, unofficially inofficially my yeah but i'd love to hear about that spiritual experience and what you did on that Super. thing because i'm in that i i'm i'm you know i'm dabbling with a few things you know meditation has been uh, something i introduced into my life uh, for the past 7 8 months i'd say almost 12 months now and mm-hmm. yoga back to yoga now after a break and mm-hmm. it's just amazing um i wouldn't say the results at all because of course once you get into the space you can easily get carried away with the same ego based mm-hmm. how, how many asanas can i do can i stand on my head can i touch my uh, toes with my balls whatever it may be like right? these crazy it's, things it's, that it's we try it's about none of the thing yoga it's is none of it. it's to be it's to be union with the god that's it absolutely that's, it's that's to appreciate the true, what you can do in the body and mind you've been given that. and that's yeah. the beauty of that journey right you don't compare it with others you don't put put up things on instagram saying i can do crow pose right it's none of those things and it's so much it's so much more than all of it yet it's actually if you look at it it's just an idea of letting go and just as you said it's unity it's the, it's it's sort of this unity this, with the divinity yeah yeah it's beautiful and i'm so glad that you know people like you are uh, there to sort of look uh, look to when people are in doubt as a mm. living example of what you believe in so mm. congratulations man on everything you so you've much. done so far and you continue the the good fight but if people are right now in um this state of confusion and they want to read up more uh or someone has a loved one or they going through chronic pain or through an illness uh can you just sort of tell them the links to your websites and the healthcare foundation please uh, uh for anything that you'll have to understand about cannabis uh, you can simply go to the great legalization movement uh, just type it up on google find us on instagram there a lot of like this amazing social media posts that we have done which that's really... glm.org right that's G- the website G- the website is glm.org And, and the internet uh, must have helped in your in your message and the in the power of spreading your word right also by limiting and limiting okay also it it, it did because it help to a certain extent have... no they they suppress anyone who is against this entire systemic 
time. Oh, and, your, um, your posts are being suppressed on social media. Yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, uh, for example, you know, like Facebook came to a point where unless you promote all of your posts, it never has a reach. You know, like you might have a fan following of 40,000 people, but it reaches to like 30 people, 40 people because they are trying to uh, create, they gave this platform and now they're like, yeah, you pay us and then. Yeah, of course. No, and also audience. if you make it political saying that BJP is against it, Congress is for it, then everyone's like, you know what, it's something to divide us even further. Let's fight. But yeah. if you try to make it a uniting experience, yeah. nah, Facebook so, doesn't so, want that shit. <laughs> so that's why we took everything, you know, like no more like online, you know, like everything is offline and okay. create like meets, public meets, national meets and this and that, all of these things that are happening, making documentaries, putting it on, trying out various different social medias. It's still very limiting the technology. Well, I hope this... Uh, conversation helps uh, at least a few more people hear your story and hear what yeah, the good yeah, work you're all doing. It takes is, all it takes is one, man. Yeah. One one guy lit is, again, he's going to just uh, venture into a whole new direction. That, Absolutely. Man, that I can vouch for. Uh, and it's amazing the power of breath and mind and consciousness. And if you have things available to you that can enhance your experience. I wouldn't even say it's a catalyst or it's a drug that makes your uh, trip better. What are those words we use in in, 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 uh -huh. in sort of colloquialism or culture? Like, oh man, I'm so I'm so stoned. I'm so, uh, my skull, skull is fried. None of that shit. Really, mm -hmm. if you just add it as a supplement, like how people talk about supplements in their diet, it really just does that. It just enhances your experience in this life. And glm.org is where you can check out all the details about the cannabis uh, plant, its medicinal benefits, the movement to legalize it. You're doing some great work, brother. And really uh, hats off to everything that you've done, the struggle so far, the struggle ahead. So Barora Healthcare Organization is back on its feet because Vicky's come back from his sabbatical, his spiritual getaway. And of course, you can check out GLM, which is the great legalization movement, glm.org. And if any of you know anyone or you would like to join Vicky in his efforts, do uh, drop a comment. I'll get you Vicky's details once I get permission from him that it's cool to share it. And uh, Vicky, thank you, my friend. Appreciate everything you've done and joining me on this episode uh, and talking about what you do and sharing your story. Difference. I appreciate your efforts for actually having me uh, to uh, speak my mind. Of course, brother. We we left it unfinished uh, at TEDx 2015. So I think there was a need to get this conversation yeah, uh, yeah. continued and get it heard and get it out there. Super. Appreciate it. Cheers, brother. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, looking forward for all of you guys to have a, a completely uh, new outlook on what cannabis is. Do check out uh, The Great Legalization movement glm.org or the glm's instagram handle which is great.legalization.movement uh, of course sandeep uh, can put up all of the links uh, on this podcast and uh, thank you guys thank you vicky cheers brother